Jeannie's happy place. Um, okay, so uh, uh, welcome everybody out there in uh, streaming YouTube land all over the planet and everybody here in Jeannie's happy place. Uh, so that, what I, the, the matinee show is um, based on, uh, you know how uh, during the pandemic we all uh, uh, did projects that um, we're always sort of pending and you never got around to and it was like when we were locked down it was like uh, oh now I can get around to this thing so uh, finally one of them was I have all these performance pieces I've been performing since the early 80s and uh, and they were in all these different file folders like this one that because uh, um, these are good hardcover things that I would carry to shows and then you'd have sort of what you played at this one and then you have another so there was all these files with this whole jumble of all of these performance pieces over 40 years and so I finally went, I gotta sort this thing out and see what the hell's in all this stuff and so I went through and read all of the pieces I've performed over 40 years so that was the project and then as I was doing it I found a bunch of pieces that I thought this is pretty good I'm like why did I stop doing this one um, so, uh, that, that's, so it was like 150 pieces or something like that I went through and I pulled out a handful of them that nobody's heard for 20 or 25 years or however long it's been since some of these. So that's what, how this all came to be. So that's what this is. Um, and so the next part was, I noticed there, there was at least in these four I'm going to do, but in others too, there was this kind of theme of that like this first I wrote these when I was these first, when I was 22 25 th early 30s 36 um, but I was aware of growing old and uh, and now I'm pushing senior citizen and all that and uh, um, and and it's, it was just sort of so striking that at 22 years old I was thinking about being 60 or 70 or 80 and and it wasn't just in one poem, it was in a bunch of them. And I was like, what in the hell was I thinking? How did I, how did I know that shit? Um, so, that's the kind of the premise of the first four poems. Uh, and so it's also about how time passes. And I was 22 years old when I wrote this. Very soon today. Yesterday, I was 12 years old, never would be 20. Today, I'm older, 22. Tomorrow, I'll be 80. Very soon, I'll have a mate, and very soon, a child. And very soon, the god of death upon me will have smiled. And very soon, I won't recall the feelings I feel today, drifted back through foggy time with others far away. Sitting now with you, my skin is young and fitting tight. Very soon, I look again, as wrinkled, not as bright. Very soon old friends will come to me and say, remember when we were 20 with every mountain yet to climb? Remember when we were 30 and had our way with time? Remember when we were 40 and oh so happy in our prime? I can remember the year and the town in which we were, but exactly how I felt or thought, I'm not so very sure. How did we see it? How did we feel it? How did we call it? How did we deal it? None of this is clear. Very soon this tent will be gone. Very soon this scene. And very soon I'll be coming back to nothing as it's been. So what do you make of today? And how long will it last? And what about the week gone by and all the years now past? Very soon today I'll wish I could recall. Very soon today will have happened, not at all. Okay. Well, we were there. Yeah. And that was just wonderful. You really right on. enjoyed that. Right on. Cheers. Yeah. Uh, 40 years since anybody's heard that bad boy. Um, right on. That's why I thought some of these is like, geez. Very different than what I'm used to. Right, right. Cool. Um, so this one was um, a little bit of a prep set up. Uh, it was, I, I, I lived on, in Eddie Condon's apartment on, 
uh, Washington Square North. And so Washington Square Park was my literally my front yard for like seven years. So I spent a bazillion hours in there. Um, and so there's some references here to a man in a bow tie, and that's Eddie Condon. And I used to, they had all these tapes around the apartment, and I would listen to his, he did a radio show, and he just sort of tell stories. And so I really got a sense of who this guy was, and kind of, he, he came alive to me, living in his apartment with his, I had his guitar in my closet and such. And uh, so, anyway, so that's what this is. Um, under these same elms. It's Saturday afternoon in New York, and the village is full of tourists. It's time to go back to the 1940s or 50s and be in a less peopled Washington Square Park, with no fence, few cars, listening for voices of Ellington, Kerouac, and Condon. An old man and woman walk out of step with the rest. They stop and point to a tree, and he tells her a story. A young couple comes into the park and let their child out of its stroller to stumble freely away from the cars and dangers, just as in any park in America today with sun. And that child may sit on any bench years later and think back to the 1960s or the 1990s. And he will talk to the old man with the cane under these same elms about what it was like before all this. And he will feel warm inside when he hears, knowing things were promising once. And he'll wonder how different it will be when he is older, much older. Uh, he may live well into the 21st century. This was just a crazy idea. That we're, I might I might live into the 21st century, um, and the voices he may hear echo then will be of Dylan, Thompson, and Miles Davis. <clears throat> New sod will be laid many times over these grassy knolls, and he may lie on a blanket with his young girlfriend, looking up at the buildings, and imagine for a moment that he sees a man with a bow tie and slicked back hair standing in a large open window looking down upon him. The man is talking and the boy leans closer to hear, but the man moves away from the in window flailing animated arms. And the child cannot hear bow tie's jokes, but someday he will. I have heard them. The voices do live on, resonating breathing eternally. The pure voices of all art bled for in this village of the world do continue and are retrievable through spirit, conjuring, books, and recordings. They're all here for that child when he closes his eyes on that blanket on this grass under these same elms. Cheers, thanks. Very thanks. Oh, and this one, this is great. Um, it's, it's even more direct about this subject. Um, so it's called Riding on Page 599. And, about the, and this is the kind of the tip. The 599 means being 59.9 years old. Okay? So I actually wrote this when I think I was 36 or something. Yeah. But, and so you'll get it now that you know that little uh, uh, clue. So, lately I've been riding on page 599. After chipping for years in the lyrical mine, I've learned to believe in the end of the line. I'm living with faith in page 599. I remember on page 102, the momentum was with me and the characters knew. There were parties galore around 194, but I flipped them so fast I don't remember no more. And I was soaring so high back at 256, prowling them streets for Alan's old angry fix. Mm -hmm. There was a marriage in there around 285, but the going got brutal, barely made it alive. Then a new dawn broke around 337. I was floating in bed like I'd made it to heaven. But the hue has turned blue around 361. Like I'm missing the joke and this is no longer fun. The path has gone dark 
and the book is so weighty, I'm beginning to doubt I'll make it to 380. And then I flip the page, and there's a brand new twist. And I'll bet by now you're getting the gist. I could put down the book when the going gets slow, or I can follow the thread of the deeper flow. Because I'm living in faith in page 599, and I've learned to believe in the end of the line. Yeah, that's, that's Cheers, right on. Yeah. Uh, okay, this is on a slightly lighter note. Uh, those of us who have made it closer to the end of the line and even gone past page 599, um, uh, this is for uh, all of us and this thing we're still riding around in. <clears throat> it's called Gotta Get a New One. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> time to turn in the old one time to get a new one uh, you should see the estimate and you won't believe the rest of it gotta get a new one cruising too many miles in too little time screeching getaways from the scene of the crime way past the warranty think I must have hit a tree wish to hell these things were free hope who's driving isn't me gotta get a new one Used to be a lucky charm. Used to be equipped with a safety alarm. Used to sp spark on all six cylinders. Now it only runs if I slip a pill in her. Gotta get a new one. <laughs> if you know me, you know I fastidiously tweak. Still, something new breaks about once a week. And the radio doesn't exactly sing like a choir. But oh yeah, I'm packing a hell of a spare tire. Yeah. Gotta get a new one. From what I hear, the back seat's all lumpy. And even parked, the ride is bumpy. The steering doesn't quite mesh with the gears. Lord knows the brakes haven't worked in years. Last I remember was Belushi tossing the cigarette lighter and rubbing the windshield so the future looked brighter. Now, this ain't no enterprise, and I ain't no Kirk, but I couldn't even get the wipers to work. Gotta get a new one. One thing's for sure, the seatbelts still snap. I know, because here I am, strapped in the trap. Comfortably floored, pedal to the metal. Come in, come in, pot calling kettle. I hate to break it to you, but it's not a rental. Gotta get a new one. But you know, I don't really mind how hard I row and it's still got radar for where to go even if it is a little slow so before the fade out ends the show instead of Jim Beam I'll go beam at the gym and I may snap a branch going out on a limb but the next time you hear this poem again I better be driving a Mercedes Benz <laughs> <laughs> Hey out there in the...